Well, hi, Brian Janey here, Allegro Piano Service in lovely Fallbrook, California. And right now I'm in my shop at my desk and open in front of me is Craigslist. I wanted to do a brief video on what it is you need to watch out for and consider when you're looking in places like Craigslist for a piano. There's also other spots you can get to. I mean, like OfferUp, it's an app that you can get that basically has stuff that people put up for sale, as well as Facebook actually has a lot of things that people throw up in their marketplace setting. And the things you wanna consider when you're on these uh, spots on the web is the piano and its setting. Is it in somebody's home? Is it a part of the furniture? You know, those are good things to consider when you're looking at the pictures. But if you see a piano that's in a garage, sitting on a floor dolly, it's got a surfboard pushed up against it, or it's in a, it's, it's in a you know, storage unit, or even if it's sitting outside, I've had you know, seen pictures of pianos literally sitting outside, and people are wanting money for those. It's amazing. You know, it's a circumstance where, you know, if it's been in a garage, I tell you what, even if a person claims they have the most ferocious hunting cat, they have the best poisons and glue traps set all over the place, it doesn't matter. If that piano's been in a garage, I can almost guarantee you that it has had four-legged visitors. And when mice go into a piano, they chew up the keys, they chew up the action, they, they poop and pee all over the place. And I tell you what, that's a smell that's not going to be easily removed from that piano, if it maybe not even be able to be removed. You know, those are circumstances you wanna avoid, big red flags. When you're looking also at instruments that people claim are antiques and they've got, you know, kind of some crazy, even if they're like not wanting much money for them, avoid antique pianos. You know, there's more moving parts inside of a piano than there is in an automobile. And it's a very mechanical thing inside. And when you've got something that old, the glue joints are gonna be kind of crusty. The structural elements of the piano are probably gonna be compromised. It, it, you know, the tuning pins and everything that it is that's a part of tuning the piano, it's gonna, they're gonna be loose. It may not even be capable of holding a tune. So those are things you wanna be very careful about and try not to fall into the antiques roadshow mentality that like, wow, it's only a hundred bucks. It's a hundred years old. It's gotta be worth more than a hundred bucks. No, in all reality, it's probably junk and you're just taking it from somebody else and bringing it to your home. So be careful about that kind of thing. I always tell people when you're looking for a piano, look for something that's 30 years old or newer. If you can find something in those sorts of situations, you're probably you're gonna have a piano that most likely is gonna be tunable and serviceable. A guy like myself can still get parts for it, and it's gonna be something that's going to last you a while. It may be a little more expensive than the stuff you see for 100 bucks that's 100 years old, but I'm telling you what, you're probably gonna have a much better experience. And realize, once you get that piano, it's, it's not necessarily always gonna be a situation where okay, we paid this amount for it, you're still gonna to have to pay to uh, have it taken care of, be, have it brought up to pitch so that it sounds like the piano teacher's piano, or it sounds in tune with at least the music you're listening to and wanting to play. You know, it's a thing where you want a piano that is not gonna get into your way when you're trying to make music. I always tell people, friends don't let friends buy pianos without having a piano technician look at it first. So whenever you're looking at an instrument like this, always make sure you've got someone like myself in your corner that can help you and at least maybe even consult with you over the phone and talk about what it is you're considering. Because we may have had experience with a particular brand or make that may put you in a spot of like reconsidering whether or not you want it. And lastly, always make sure that you use a piano mover when you're taking a piano out of someone else's home. You don't want to find yourself in a place where you bring your uncle and your brother and then you go to pick that thing up and then you're carrying it out of somebody's house and you end up cracking a tile or messing up their front steps or oh my gosh, you end up dropping it. Always use a piano mover. It's a lot less expensive than the possible damage you might cause doing trying to move a piano yourself. So those are just a couple of things. If you have any questions, feel free to give me a call or reach out to me in whatever fashion you find necessary. Again, Brian Janey, Allegro Piano Service. Thanks for watching.